Hi, I'm here on Monday at the World Health Organization. There's a discussion about research and development. Um, Gopal, can you, can you start out by explaining to people who you are, who you work for, and uh, why you're here this week? I'm Gopal Kumar, and I work with the Third World Network uh, as a legal advisor for the Third World Network. And we are interested in this issue because it's an uh, issue concerned uh, with the access to medicine in developing countries. And what are they negotiating this week? This week, the member countries are negotiating how the member countries can implement the recommendation of uh, CEWG, the Consultative Expert Working Group, uh, on coordination and financing of uh, research and development, uh, which affects the developing countries. And what are the main areas of controversy? The main areas of contro controversy, you mean? At, you know, this week, I mean, the, 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 the issues that divide the countries. The issues uh, divide the country. I think the first issue is the mode of implementation of the recommendations of uh, CWG. CWG recommends its recommendation should be implemented through a convention under the Article 19 of WHO's Constitution. But many developed countries are not agreeing to this idea. According to them, a binding commitment uh, is not to be done at this point of time, and they cite that. Uh, such a commitment actually would lead to a binding obligation uh, related to uh, uh, monetary contribution to this new mechanism. Actually, if you look at these mechanisms which are currently existing, uh, their treaty does not mean that there is a binding commitment to make a monetary contribution uh, to the agreement. So this is there are various mechanisms in which uh, uh, monetary contributions are coming in a voluntary manner. But there are uh, mechanisms in which uh, monetary mechanisms are also obligatory. But these issues need to be uh, discussed in the coming days. Instead of saying that because there is a, an element of compulsory monetary contribution, therefore we are not ready to go for a treaty. This is uh, an argument, uh, in, in a way it's a pretext to prevent, uh, prevent a, a global framework on R&D. Uh, what's your what's your view on the uh, delinkage debate that several countries mentioned today? I think uh, it's very clear that uh, since uh, uh, say 90s we have evidence that there are uh, certain uh, medical uh, needs are concerned. The current mainstream mechanism of intellectual property rights does not work because the whole logic of uh, intellectual property right mechanism is that to provide a set of monopoly during which the investor can re recoup the investment by charging heavy price from the consumers. This does not work because many of these consumers are in the developing countries and they do not have the cap capacity to pay. So therefore, uh, this leads to people call it a, a market failure and in order to address this, I think it's important uh, to have a mechanism wherein it's the cost of R&D should not reflect in the price of medicines. Thank you. Before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to add? I think uh, the, in the coming days the member countries should uh, work to a, a mechanism which provide a uh, predictable and sustainable finance along with a set of norms which change the rules of the game. The current rule is that intellectual property rights and monopoly rights, which leads to uh, a great problem in uh, you know, addressing the ac uh, problem when it comes to accessing the medicine at an affordable cost. So the new mechanism should address that issue precisely and also to put the research R&D outcomes uh, to the, uh, into the public domain where in which it can help the follow-on innovations. Thank you. Thank you.